a beautifully unique hand-painted world with interesting and difficult puzzles. Welcome to Candle, a second offering of beautiful exploration-style puzzling from Daedalic Entertainment, this time developed by Teku Studios. While it is a platformer at its core, it still has the same hunt for items to create solutions to problems each area offers you. The story behind Candle follows Teku, a young apprentice attempting to save his tribe Shaman who has been kidnapped by the Wakja. It seems you were never given a full history of creation from the Shaman, and through various paintings and encounters you discover tales of fear, desperation and a struggle for power. I think the reason behind choosing a game like this to review is clear. It looks fantastic. The amount of detail that's gone into every scene is amazing. It's difficult to take it all in, but it's not just the images which are great, it's the little animations for the creatures that make it even better. The entire world just feels alive, from little bugs hovering around to the monkeys swinging around in the trees. Every flower and creature is designed to be recognisable in some way, but still has a very unique, almost alien quality to it. Each of the tribe members looks like a root vegetable, but is characterised by a unique mask, which is a nice touch and you meet all kinds of strange characters along the way, like the obsessive collector who just seems to appear wherever you go, and the isolated blacksmith hidden away in the treetops mindlessly hitting things with a hammer because his furnace is broken. It's a lovely example of world building and it's carried across entirely through imagery. Even the dialogue in the game is done through cute little animation scenes which tell you what happened, what the person is looking for, or where you might find what you're looking for. It would have been nice to have known that I could skip them before I had finished the entire game, as some of them can drag on a little bit, especially if you're re-watching it for one specific detail which you missed first time around. However, that isn't the only way in which the story is told as there is also a narrator, entirely voiced by Terry Wilton, who also narrated the Tryon games. It's done in a very similar way as well, but it adds a friendly yet dramatic tone to the game. It's frequently used to clear up what you're actually supposed to be doing and explain what's going on just in case you couldn't get it from all of the imagery. Gameplay wise it's very standard platforming stuff, movement, jumping, running etc. But there's also a lot of little details which is worth keeping in mind, like when you're near enemies you'll automatically creep and if you do other movements it could disturb them, and if they're near a drop you can sneak up and push them off. These are all easily forgotten when you've picked up 5 items and you're trying to work out where to use each one, and you also have to combine it with all the various interactions that you get with the candle itself. The candle is used obviously for lighting dark areas, but also for activating things like teleporters, triggering traps and general arson in some instances. Most of these are done by simply standing next to an object object and activating it. But you also have a second way which emits a brighter light which can be used to frighten animals or light up hidden paintings. So initially I had a lot of problems with Candle. I was finding it awkward to stumble my way through the puzzles and there is no hint mechanism to guide you along your way aside from talking to the various characters in the environment. But every time I found the solution it was incredibly obvious. I think I was trying to be too smart and overcomplicating things. But once I'd got about halfway through the game I was used to all of the mechanics and things just started to click. I could see where each of the components went and once you know that you can set about working out what order they need to be done in. The primary reason for not being able to solve some of the puzzles initially was that I didn't realise I could access another area, therefore limiting my items and meaning I couldn't progress. On one occasion the narrator kicked in and said the answer was staring him right in the face. And that helped out to no end, but after that there was no gentle suggestions, there was no hint mechanism left. I completely understand that having the answer to the puzzle right there isn't always appreciated, but there's no harm in having an optional system which can be used by those that like to have hints. This was seen in Silence which was released practically at the same time by the same publisher. When all's said and done, Candle is a wonderful game which you really need to play in order to get a full appreciation of the world they've created. It has little stumbles here and there in terms of its mechanics such as the jump sometimes being a bit unresponsive and the solution to the puzzles being a little obscure, but nothing which truly breaks the game. I'll be completely honest, I did have a little helping hand in two or three places from an online guide, but the way in which the guide was created also indicates that they struggled in finding the answer from time to time as well. I would have much rather had hints given by the game rather than outright answers from an online guide. Time-wise it took me about seven hours to complete the entire thing, which includes one or two spots where I wandered around aimlessly. It doesn't have too much in terms of replayability, I didn't notice any choices that need to be made, but there are some achievements to go back through for should you want to. I really enjoyed my playthrough of Candle. It's nice to see a game every now and then which has a truly independent feel to it, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. The world feels alive and it's all down to the art style and not deviating from it. I don't believe you'd ever see something like this from a major dev team. I fully recommend it, and not just because it's a non-pixelated indie platformer.